All right, another kind of uh, property of circles and chords that we've kind of been working on here is called the segments of chords theorem. And it basically is saying that if you have two chords inside of a circle and they, they intersect one another, they kind of split each other up proportionally, is what you can kind of say. All right? And, and really, all that you need to do is, you can actually do this with products, so you don't have to use proportions. All right? But if you take the distance from A to E, and you multiply that by the distance from E to B, you will always get the exact same number if you did the other one as well. CE times E. The segment of Quartz theorem says if you take this part of a segment times the other part, assuming the other chord cuts that chord into two, you take this part, this segment of a chord, times the other segment of a chord, it will always equal the same number as if you did with the other chord itself. Okay, so it's a segment of chords there. Not going to go through the proof of it, <clears throat> just kind of a rule to remember. Got that written down? Yes? So this would only be like working towards diameter, or could it be like intersect not at the circle like that? It wouldn't have to intersect in the center. It's just if two chords intersect anywhere inside the circle, mm -hmm. so whether it's on the diameter or not on the diameter, as long as they intersect, this theorem applies. All right? So I'll do one example here with you. So let's find the lengths of all those segments. Okay. Can I use the segments of chords theorem that I just showed you on the previous slide? Yeah. Yeah, because we have two chords that intersect each other inside the circle. Right? Their point of intersection is definitely inside the circle. Okay? So if you use that segment of chords theorem you know that you can multiply that length times the other length, and that will equal this length times that length. Okay? So on our problem, what am I going to do? X plus 4 times 12 equals X plus 2 plus 5 times 12. Where's 12? <laughs> X plus 4. X plus 4 times X, X. X. equals X plus 3 times Good. So X plus 4 times X equals x plus 2 times x plus 1, right? x plus 4 times x has to equal x plus 2 times x plus 1. Okay? <clears throat> Multiply this together, what do you get? x times x. x squared. x squared plus 4x equals, how do I multiply two binomials together? FOIL. Okay? x squared plus x plus 2x plus 2. Now what? Subtract. Subtract what from both sides? 3x squared. Alright, we don't know. Somebody else? Subtract x squared from both sides, that seems like a really good idea, because what's going to happen there? Cancels out. Cancels out, right? If I subtract x squared from both sides, 
all I'll have on this side is 4x. And on the other side, if I subtract x squared from both sides, won't that one be gone too? So all I have is x plus 2, x plus 2, or do you care if I write that as 3x plus 2? Yeah. Because I'll add my like terms. So now I have 4x equals 3x plus 2. Now what do you think? Subtract 3x from both sides. I want to get all my x's onto the same side, so let's subtract 3x from both sides. And what do I get? 1x equals 2, or just x equals 2. Now could you write down the lengths of all the segments? Yep. AC, AE, CE, BC, BD, CD. I could do all of them. How long is AC? A to C. 2. Remember, x equals 2 plus 2, so that'd be 4, right? How about, how about CE? 3. Three. So what's AE then? 7, seven right? Because if that's 4 and that's 3, then the whole thing obviously would have to be 7. How about BC? 6. How about CD? 2. And then B D. The So now the two chords were different lengths, but if you take the products of their segments together, you'll get the same amount. So there's an example of the segments of chords there. All right. Okay.